I've been messing around with voice cloning for a while now, and I've been trying to nail it down and get it right. I've used all different platforms, 11 Labs, PlayHT, even in Video AI's new voice cloning is part of their video generator, and some other platforms that just don't measure up at all. But I've been trying to figure out how to dial it in to get the best I can. I've learned some things along the way, and I want to share them with you so you can get the best voice clone possible. Now, even though I've used different platforms, I want to talk today specifically about Eleven Labs because I'm using their advice and guidance to get a great voice clone, and most of my testing has been in Eleven Labs. But I think a lot of these tips are going to apply regardless of whatever platform you're using. So first things first, the codec, it doesn't matter whether you're supplying a sample file in a WAV format or an MP3, makes no difference. An MP3 at 128 kilobits or higher is just fine. So don't stress too much over the file type or the bit rate. Higher bit rates don't seem to improve the quality of the clone at all. And something we have to keep in mind when we're creating a sample or we're recording audio for the voice cloning things to do their job is that they are trying to mimic everything they hear. This includes not only your voice, but the speed, the inflections, your accent, the tonality, your breathing pattern, the strength of your voice, mouth clicks. If you don't know what those are, a lot of people, when they're talking right before they start a sentence, they'll slap their tongue off the roof of their mouth. It's going to pick those up and think those are part of your speech and try and include or incorporate that somehow. It's a really a subconscious thing. I don't know the psychology behind it, but be aware of it. It'll also pick up other mouth noises. So if you have a particularly dry mouth, you're sticky and things are making noise, depending on the quality of your microphone and your recording setup, those can totally get picked up. And the breathing patterns, yes, most of the time we don't even notice that we're taking a breath. We don't notice that when we're listening to audio, but if it's weird, you'll probably notice. And last but not least, noise and artifacts. This can be environmental noise. This can be the hum of your computer that you're recording next to. This can be outside noise, the birds chirping on the windowsill next to me. Thankfully, they're being quiet today. Kids running up and down the hall outside your door. Again, thankfully, they're being quiet today. But the AI that's cloning your voice doesn't know that those aren't part of your speech. So it's going to try and replicate those in every audio file, every text-to-speech you try to create using that clone. All that sounds pretty standard and straightforward, right? Now, here's the one that really got me because I can't believe I didn't think about it. But if you're talking slow and monotone in your voice sample, that's what the AI is going to try and replicate. And if you're talking fast and really emotional, that's what it's going to try and replicate. But here's the part that I really didn't get is that if you're thinking, well, I've got some samples of me in all different styles. So I've got one where I'm doing something. I'm really super excited and I'm talking really fast and loud and moving around. And I have a sample of me reading something in a documentary style that'll be much more even. Yeah, if you try and upload those both as samples, you're probably just going to confuse the AI. And what you'll end up is one of two things, depending on which AI voice cloning daily you're using. Eleven Lab says that too much variation in your voice style in the samples you provide will end up with really unpredictable variation between regenerations. So maybe you get something real monotone when you generate one time and then you regenerate it and it gets all hyper. What I heard from Descript about this is that it'll try and average out your voice, the monotone slow voice and the excited fast voice, and you'll end up with a voice clone that doesn't sound like you at all. So the key here is to submit a voice sample that is consistent in performance, pitch, and tone. I was really perplexed by this voice clone I did in Eleven Labs that came out really high-pitched and talking really fast. It turns out I was the sample was the problem. It was just trying to do what I fed it. I did not realize how much my voice style changes within the same day even, depending on what I'm doing or what I'm working on, what kind of mood I'm in, whether I'm hungry, hangry or not, or first thing in the morning. I really thought I could just grab something I've recorded previously or grab a bunch of things I recorded previously, throw them up there and it would be good. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. Who knew? So what I did is I started making recordings specifically to use for my AI cloned voice. I started with the samples they have in Eleven Labs and I noticed right away that the scripts were very different. I read them in different ways. My voice sounds different. They have like radio ads. And the way you read a radio ad is probably going to come across very different than the conversational script. And you can grab these off Eleven Labs or have ChatGPT spit you out something. 
or just sit there and talk to yourself if you're okay with that. Think about how your voice is going to be different if you're reading like a news reporter script. You sort of get in that mindset and your brain tells you this is how you talk when you're reading a news script. This is how you talk when you're reading an ad and you're trying to be super salesman versus how you would talk when you're just talking to your friend on the phone or how would you would talk when you're reading a script that is two people talking to each other. It's all very different. The differences are crazy wild. And I noticed when I switch, I kept them in three separate compositions into script so that I can go through and see the text and listen and pull out what I want and use it and submit it for all these different tests I've been doing. It's wild to me to go between these clips and hear the difference in my voice style just based on the type of script that I'm reading. And more than that, it's not even just the actual words on the script itself. It's also when I'm recording them. My voice first thing in the morning, I'm sure yours too, is very different than my mid-afternoon tired voice. My mid-morning voice is probably the best. It's warmed up, it's awake, and it's not exhausted and hankering for a Snickers bar. So the key here is to record a script in the style that you're going to be using your voice clone for. You know, you don't want to read a Shakespeare novel as your sample script for it to clone your voice when you're going to be using that voice clone to do product promotion videos or radio spots. It's going to come across pretty weird. And if at all possible, try and record your sample, your audio sample or samples in one sitting, or at least in the same place and roughly the same time. You know, you might have to get up and go to the bathroom or whatever, but by doing it in the same place at the same time, you're making sure that you're working with the exact same equipment in the exact same environment, that your mic is the same distance away from you. Generally, as you can see, I move entirely too much, but we can't have everything perfect. Hopefully we can just eliminate as many of the variables as we can. It'll also make sure that you're room tone and those environmental sounds are all very similar. Now, Eleven Lab says that the most important aspects of getting a good voice clone are the voice itself, the language, and the quality of the recording. And by quality of recording, they're not saying that you have to have a $3,000 microphone and all this whiz-bang equipment and stuff like that. Really, they're saying noise-free environment, nice, clean, clear voice going into the microphone being captured. That's it. And you can absolutely do some processing on that sample file after you record record it and before you upload it to Eleven Labs. So if you want to do something like run it through Descript's studio sound and clean it up really good, or there's things that you want to clip out. Now be careful if you're clipping out parts of your sample file that you're not leaving audible clicks in there. The length of your sample, they say, is not nearly as important as the quality, but it does play a role. Eleven Labs has found a one to two minute sample to be the sweet spot for getting a really good voice clone. Going over three minutes, they say, doesn't seem to improve the quality of the voice clone, and in some cases can actually make it worse by making it unstable. We don't want that. I'm unstable enough in real life. I don't need my voice clone being unstable too. When it comes to volume, we're looking at the Goldilocks principle here. Not too soft, not too loud. Eleven Labs recommends being between minus 23 and minus 18 decibels with a true peak of minus three decibels. Now, when you're generating audio with your clone voice, something I've found that seems to be working really well for me is in the settings within Eleven Labs. I like to leave everything at the default except for the style exaggeration. I find that if I move that up to 20%, that's when I get something that's really close to sounding like me. So let me show you with that down at zero, which that's the default. Change that to default and I generate. A group of bumbling grave robbers concocted a plan that could only be described as gravely misguided. Yeah, that sounds like me. Now, let's switch this up to 20%. A group of bumbling grave robbers concocted a plan that could only be described as gravely misguided. And I think that sounds a lot more accurate to my voice and the way I would probably read that. Instant voice cloning is what I've been using here in Eleven Labs, and that's available in the starter plan and above. So you're allowed to have up to 10 custom voices. So I've created several instant voice clones using different samples to see kind of how they worked out. And I'm finding that the sample really does make a difference. So remember, MP3 at 128 kilobits or higher, the quality of the voice and the environment matters a lot more than the quantity. So make sure you're speaking in the way that you want your voice clone to speak when you use it in projects. If you're talking fast, your clone is going to talk fast. If you're talking slow and monotonous, your clone is going to talk slow and monotonous. Best way to achieve this is to record something that is similar to what you're actually going to use, the same style and everything, so that you'll talk in that same way and it'll be very usable for your projects.
One to two minutes of a sample recording is the sweet spot. Over three really doesn't help you and might hurt. And try and keep that volume between negative 23 and negative 18 with a true peak of minus three. If you've got any tips that I missed, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear them.